Good afternoon, Diocese of California. This is Bishop Mark Andrews speaking to you from the Episcopal residence on Lyon Street. Sheila Andrews is the videographer using her phone, and this is Pixar, our beloved uh, rescue dog. I say that because he got the name Pixar from where he was found by Pets Unlimited, which was the parking lot of the Pixar studio in Emeryville. He's been part of our family for the last seven years, and uh, he's helping us shelter in place, and he's helping our oldest daughter. He's mostly staying with her in the Haight uh, district of uh, San Francisco and being her support. And I'm thinking about all of us during this time and how we support each other, how we reach out virtually, and sometimes there's somebody in person helping us, and I'm uh, praying for you during this time. I wanted to reach out today because this is an inflection point in the sheltering in place um, experience that we're having in California. Uh, sheltering in place has been extended uh, for through the end of May, and we, we don't know uh, exactly where it's going to go from there. There's, there's so many unknowns about what will open, what will not open, um, what the financial costs are going to be, um, because of the tremendous work of Christopher Hayes and uh, Sarah Crawford and Tom Ferguson and Brad Barber and Abbott Bailey and others, um, many of our congregations were enabled to uh, do the best work they could to get the PPP loan applications in. And um, almost half of those that have been applied for have been granted. Uh, so that's that's a tremendous lifeline for uh, congregations and institutions that were so worried with great validity for the financial security of employees. Uh, and yet there's a big unknown for uh, after the PPP loans uh, run out, after two and a half months from, from the funding and um, where, where people are going um, in terms of security, uh, not only in our churches and in our ex institutions, but um, for the restaurants and all the, the workers around us. And of course, um, we're all so deeply concerned about the, these heroes, uh, both actual medical workers, but also those in support systems all around it, um, firefighters and people doing supply chain for health services. And so many of these people are losing their lives. There's so much uncertainty. All of us have been touched by COVID-19. Sheila and I have lost our first friend uh, to the virus, uh, an old friend who who was a truly, truly good person. He did so much good um, for our family many, many years ago. We haven't seen him in a long time, um, but we just learned that he succumbed uh, to the virus um, uh, over, just over a week ago. And whether we have lost someone personally or someone we know has been very sick, we are all touched uh, by the financial and the physical and mental suffering that is going on. So I wanted to uh, say at the deepest level, I know how to say that um, God continues to teach us and to reassure us in these uh, difficult times. And as I was preparing to, for a virtual visitation yesterday for St. Francis, San Francisco, I, I heard God speak in a new way to me about a very familiar story, the uh, story of the Good Shepherd, the parable, if you will, of the Good Shepherd in the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. And there, in this portion of the Good Shepherd uh, section, the I Am uh, section called the Good Shepherd, Jesus says he is not only the Good Shepherd, uh, whose sheep hear him and follow him because they know his voice, and that is, they can trust him, they know who he is, but then he goes on and says he's also the door of, of the sheepfold. Uh, it's a confusing set of metaphors shifting from being the shepherd to the door. Um, he says that he's clarifying things. I, I think it would not have been very clarifying if I had been present there. But as the Gospel of John unfolds, I think it becomes clearer 
what Jesus is saying through the Good Shepherd imagery of being the Good Shepherd and being the door uh, to the sheepfold. He later in the Gospel stands in front of a rock tomb, a cave, sealed with a heavy stone, where on the other side of that stone is the body of his friend Lazarus. And he calls out to him, Lazarus, come forth. And as the Good Shepherd passage promises, Lazarus can hear his voice, the voice of his beloved friend, and he comes forth. Then, almost at the very end of the Gospel of John, uh, we have Jesus, after his death and his resurrection, appearing in a locked room. Again, a door that is meant to keep out or keep in, uh, and inside that room, everything is fear. And Jesus is not stopped by the door. He appears inside the room, and he speaks words of peace and comfort and mission uh, of discipleship to his friends. It's not long afterwards in the, in the book of Acts, and we had this lesson yesterday as well, that the same women and men who were huddled in fear with a door locked to protect them, to keep out and to keep in, are now once again gathered, but this time in the open, full of confidence, full of hope, full of faith. Jesus has transformed a locked room of shadow and fear into a place of courage. This is what Jesus does. Wherever we are, whatever our condition is, he is with us. Nothing can keep him out. Behold, says the book of Revelation, I set before you a door which cannot be shut. This is an eternal message to all who believe and all who hope and all who need hope and need belief. I'm going to close with a prayer from the book of Common Prayer. This is... Uh, a prayer for those we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never-failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray or even know. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you, dear people of the Diocese of California. Know how much Sheila and I love you and pray for you every day. Uh, how much we know that you are praying for each other, for us, and for the world. And how much our Savior, Jesus Christ, hears our prayers and meets us where we need to be met.